because so many adults have left their lives. The people who should have been responsible for them weren't there. They were chasing their drug, you know, or incarcerated, or just not there. Shelter and basic needs and help and lack of parenting and family unification is not happening. These parents of these young people aren't wanting them to come home. Um, and they're too busy doing whatever they're doing or their household is just not, you know, capable. Of because they've had to fend for themselves in lives and have experienced some things that you can't, are unimaginable. And, and young children should be protected, and many of them were not. Well, I've been doing this research since 1989, so I never thought when I started we'd still be working on this issue. We thought it would be solved long ago. But of course, we keep going through these cycles of economic downturns, and I feel like homeless families are a leading economic indicator. When things go, you know, the economy struggles, we see as a, a, a surge in the, our most vulnerable citizens. And right now, clearly some of our most vulnerable citizens are young families with young children. Well, I guess I've been homelessness off and on since I was 16. Um, I, there was some family problems going on, so I ended up moving in with my boyfriend. And we got our own place when I was 18 and ended up pregnant with my first daughter. And I was working, but um, it was minimum wage, so I couldn't afford the house. And, and we lost our place and had to move back in with his mom. And then she ended up losing her place. And they have God. <laughs> and I don't know. And then I ended up moving with my mom. So it's like it was a repeated thing. Like, I think I've had three houses in my name, and I've lost them all because I couldn't afford it. And I think the highest I've ever got paid was 850. So, and I think we need to think about where are these families coming from, and I mean in their life, not from other places. But you know, because when we talk to young families who are currently in an emergency shelter, we often hear that they have come, a lot, you know, they've come from families that were turbulent or were moving around, or they you know, one of their parents died early or was incarcerated or they were in the child protection system. So they often are touched by our systems from a very early point in their life many, many times. And I feel that we must have missed some opportunities along the way to strengthen their futures. You know, family dynamics, usually house, you know, their housing is precarious. Or um, we've also lately been getting a few um, addicts, um, parents who are taking their MFIP checks to use for um, drugs, alcohol, um, or one for gambling. Um, we've had a gambler um, also who are just taking their, their checks and they needed to be somewhere where they can provide for their children. Um, and so that's how we get a lot of our young ladies, the, the situations that they're in before they come to us. Um, with my kids being so young, I don't think, well, at least my boys, I don't think they paid attention to that. But my daughter, um, there were plenty of times where she was like, Mom, are we going back home? And she would ask where her room was at and things like that. So, that, I mean, that was hard for me because I felt like I wasn't able to provide for them or keep them in a stable housing and just that whole discipline of having a lifestyle within your home that nurtures your child. And it's, it's one thing to have an apartment, but it's another thing to bring a home environment and to teach a home environment and not just survival skills, but skills that are going to become automatic. You know, some of, some of us who had we're privileged and blessed in households with a mom and a dad. We knew our mom and dad were there and were going to do for us. And, you know, we knew we'd get up to a breakfast. We knew that when we came home from school, there was going to be a snack and we were going to have a dinner together. Well, we, those are things that have to be taught. You know, one of the things we've learned, it, both in developmental science and particularly in the study of resilience, is that there are windows of opportunity for change where, you know, 
there's a, a window where if you try to change the course of development, you have a better chance. And it, when we're talking about young parents, it, it's interesting to point out that there are two windows of opportunity, one for the parent, one for the child, that may be coinciding. Because we know that in children, early development is a window of opportunity. The b development is happening very quickly. Important aspects of brain development are being, you know, a foundation is being laid down that will have an importance later on for learning. But we also know there's another window of opportunity in the transition years between about 17 and 25 when the brain is doing its final maturing and there's a lot of change in that window as well. And so it, with young parents, you, what you may have is an opportunity to influence simultaneously um, development in the parent and the child at a particularly good point for both of them where you can really have an impact and change the course of development for each of those two people. They've been in bad situations, they've been abused, they've been neglected, and they are still fighting. And they're still saying, you know what, I still gotta get an education. I still need to teach my child um, how to be an adult. And if this is what you do, you might go through some stuff, but we're gonna still work on ourselves. I'm gonna still go to school, I'm still gonna go to college. I'm still going to, you know, fight to have, you know, good housing for me and my child and we're gonna have a better life. You know, so it's amazing to see how well they, they are just adapted to their situation and they will make it work. Everybody needs help, um, and especially young parents and even if they don't have parents to support them, you know, housing like East Metro Place I mean if I had to talk to anybody I would definitely recommend people to fund this operation because they're helping a lot of people and just not me I know people that have been here and they're in college now and have a house and their kids are off in school and you know they're doing a lot better so I mean if they can fund more programs like this for young mothers then I think they will have a better chance at life because if we do it right, long term, these families are gonna bring back to our communities. They're gonna bring back a value to our society. They're gonna be able to work and become more self-sufficient if we have the appropriate services in place.